So, welcome to the Take 5 podcast, where we will be discussing films we have viewed and of our own creation, or other people's creation. My guest today is an actor, writer, and aspiring director. Please welcome today's guest, Sean Pestel. Hi, thanks Hello, for having me. Hello, Sean. Pardon? Yes. Sorry, I said thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure <laughs> um now how are you coping through this quarantine uh just sort of just using the time to sort of get right and stuff watching a lot of tv you know yeah it's important to carry on try to improve yourself especially because you've got a lot of time to yourself uh well how about you how are you coping mm. um i've been I've, i mean i've been doing fine i'm I actually i actually quite enjoy it can't lie um I, I mean, I've I've been using it to just I've just been using the time to write, create, watch, um, yeah. watch TV, film. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got a project on the on the go at the moment. Hard, ah. it's hard writing. It's good fun though. Yes. Um, yeah. Now, when it comes to the film industry, um, what's your goal? So, um, so I've been in the industry. Uh, like since I was really really little and I started off with musical theatre in like oh. pantomime and village hall stuff and uh, <laughs> I you know uh, in my mind I was always wanted to be like that West End Broadway mm. actor but um, filming has always when I started to do media studies that's why I got a real soft spot for that and I started oh, yeah. uh, that's when I really got into it and I decided that I yeah. wanted to start working on film and that I loved creating it and there's something really special about having something that was in your mind being created and displayed to an audience and yeah. you know with film more people can you can share that more than yeah. you can with other and I love that yeah that's a good point actually <laughs> um now obviously because we've got so much time we can watch whatever we want I mean we could try and watch everything that there is available to watch but mm. Even then, I doubt we'd be able to watch it all. <laughs> but um, what have you been watching lately? So, oh my god, <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, of just late nights, I've been watching a lot of Modern Family, but that's nothing really big dramatic. It's just a yeah. little show. Um, if you want to talk about some good stuff that I've been watching, oh, just, I'll just look it up here. Uh, Obviously, we just had May the Fourth, so it was fun you oh, know, yeah. watching the classics of Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, what I would say I really, I've, been, I've just been watching an awful lot of um, those Netflix exclusive things that they've been releasing. Obviously, they're just TV shows, but yeah, the story that they've put into it is amazing. Like, yeah. uh, have you seen Hollywood? I Netflix. We just started watching that. It's got like it's Sheldon really Cooper good. and Jim Parsons from Big Bang yeah. Theory. It, huh. It's really, yeah, it's yeah. really. Yeah, yeah true. I mean, I I actually quite like how how it's um how some of the some of it's been shot, and then the way the the writing and then the yeah. camera work is interlinked. Yeah, um, I really like and... how they filmed the theme song with them climbing the Hollywood sign. Yeah, it's really That's good. Clever. I mean, I mean, I learned something from that, and I, I mean, it's not a major thing, but it's the Holly. I never knew that the Hollywood sign was Hollywood Land. Did yeah. You know, in in the forties, it was Hollywood Land. Obviously, now it's just yeah, what? yeah, it was Hollywood Land. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean that, that was that was a bit of a surprise. Um, <laughs> now for anyone that watched the first episode, um, we had, um, if you remember, we had Don Sidaway on, where we discussed his short film, A Wandering Soldier, and if any of you recognise um, this um, today's guest. He was one. He was one of one of the stars of, the, of that short film. Now, um, let's discuss. So let's discuss that. A wandering soldier. Yes. What was it like working with fellow beginners in the short film world? Well, okay. So for me, this was very uh, a big step for me because this is the first time mm -hmm. I've worked with like short. When I say short films, I mean I've done a lot of media studies stuff. You know, you got yeah. the school camera, you got the school tripod, and yeah. you go there. Uh, uh, but it was very, very enjoyable actually working with people who had the equipment 
and they were ready and it, mm-hmm. it didn't feel like us working with beginners it felt very professional yeah uh, obviously you've all met dom and working with dom was so inspiring he was very mm-hmm. very good at, um mm-hmm. he's very very well planned out he knew what he wanted yeah. and as we know, that's really what you want in a director. A yeah. director is what we what we're gonna see. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, working with that was beautiful. And obviously, uh watching your second episode, you had my co star, Matt. Uh yeah. Matt was amazing. He was a really great person to work with, super supportive. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, no, he he was a star as well. He did amazing playing the lead. Really mm-hmm. good. Um and what was it like working with a team to achieve the same goal? Yes, it, w- it was really, really good. Uh, so I was new uh, to that group. So obviously the, oh, everyone yeah. there, was, they all knew each other. They were all yeah. in the film. Um, so I was sort of a little nervous at first. <laughs> but working with the people, I felt very comfortable uh, because I felt the passion that was going between the whole group. Yeah. Uh, so we definitely utilized the time and we got the best we can. And I hope everyone definitely does enjoy The Wandering Soldier because I'm yeah. sure we all will. Um, yeah. There are, so, yeah, but it was a great time, though. A fun time was had. Um, we've obviously we've got some good stories. You know, uh, behind the scenes was fun. Uh, there was one time where was it? we were trying to get a horse in oh, shot. Yeah. And <laughs> it was just me in my German costume going, hey, what's he? <laughs> just chasing or chasing a horse around a field for ages so you know that, that's the point of uh, filming it's good to have fun behind and in front of the camera yeah exactly um now obviously you you, you being there you'd have seen seen it all happen all, happen, all the the crew working now what did you learn from that and from that experience and from the team that you you're all going to take forward into your projects um okay so i think working on wonder and soldier all together really inspired me to start i had an idea uh mm-hmm. and uh doing the wonder and soldier made me really want to start you know getting up and using the ideas that we had and i yeah. think it was very inspiring to to know that you can form a, a project, a film, and obviously, um, mm. I think if I had to learn anything uh, from the project, it's like even if things go wrong in on the set, mm. you need to carry on, do the best of what you can. Yeah, because, to be honest, we're never uh, what I wrote is that we're never going to get a perfect project, but we yeah. get a very entertaining one and a very uh, yeah educational emotional experience for the audience to watch and that's the idea because mm. i could almost tell you like take star wars i guarantee you that the way that was filmed wasn't 100 percent how george lucas wanted it to be filmed yeah exactly but we got what we got and what we got was amazing we can agree yeah that's what i can learn yeah now when it comes to creating ideas and producing your own ideas Obviously, the other day when when we were discussing this episode, um, you told me that you had um, that you finished writing a film, which yes. um, is called "Till Death Do Us Apart." Now, what inspired you to write this story? So, "Till Death Do Us Part." Um, <laughs> so, jo- this really did start as a very small thing. There was no inspiration to really. Mm-hmm the story to be honest there was no like real life events that made me want to yeah. write it it was um so i was at college and we had to write a short story with that established the um you know establishment issue one issue two the finale yeah and um everyone was like uh the teacher was like oh you could be really box standard you know timmy went to the store uh timmy had a good life but he had no money he got the money but then he went to go to ride the bike but the bike had um a flat tire he fixed the bike he got the chocolate bar you know that's an example of how yeah. basically a story was sort of laid out uh i didn't want to be very basic i actually wanted to write something like an emotional story 
So yeah. that's what I did. I, I wrote Till Death Do Us Part, gave it a full-on title. Um, it's very different. So the monologue I wrote um, back in college is very different to the film. When I say different, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, the film's been more established yeah. to it. Absolutely. And um, yeah, that's sort of how the, I got the idea. The idea was just a small little project, and I thought it'd be fun to write a little story. I wanted to do a romance. I thought it was a bit more... Um, out of my comfort zone. Yeah, interesting. Um, is there anything you can tell us about it, or is so, this some sort of secret that you're keeping? It is. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> to death to us part, there is literally it, it's it's. I am itching to tell everyone about the whole film. Honestly, keeping yeah. my secret is really hard, but. I can tell you, all I can say is it's about a couple called Travis and Tiffany. Mm -hmm. They were together and we see them after Tiffany moved away and she's come back and they want to be together despite their differences. Huh. That's, that's the best way I can phrase that about giving out too many spoilers. <laughs> I'm, that's... That sounds like an interesting story that I am looking forward to see. Um, now, Till Death Lives Apart, the name, just the name alone, is already interesting. Um, yes. Where did you get the name from, or what led you to the name? Sure, I really can't remember. So I used the same name as I did for the monologue. Oh, yeah. Um, See, the monologue is a bit of a, um, I'm going to be honest with you guys, it, it's, I would say it's a bit of a teaser. Like, the name is in the, in, in the story, and you, obviously you wait and see. So, yeah. uh, I, you know, without giving away the story, I can't really give the, a good story behind the name. But I, think, I thought the name was very fitting. Uh, my auntie, she helped me actually write the original monologue. Oh, and yeah. She um, she helped me create the name and the, the story. So I'm going to be honest with you, it's not 100% me. Obviously, this was just the, the story. I wrote the script, but the yeah. original story, you know, I, I can't take 100% credit yeah. to help out. So, I mean, I've, but the name is very fitting. And mm -hmm. Do you have a message in this in this particular story? Well, this is my short, my first like this is my director debut if if you yeah yeah so um with oh, with the story prop. oh there we are <laughs> so there we are yeah oh, okay cool so yeah with uh my director debut and i i kind of i, I didn't want to give a make it overly complicated with a big yeah. message that people come out the yeah. theater or the watch it from your phone being like yeah. oh what was that I don't I didn't get that I just wanted a nice story which was mm. really entertaining to watch you know brings a tear to your eye and mm. uh, it's just enjoyable and that's yeah. what I want to give to the audience I don't want I'm not aiming for any big cinematic um, um, story behind the story yeah. stuff not yet mm. huh interesting um now um do, do you have a poster for this film uh yes well no but yes uh i did um my friend dan rimmel he helped me create or he created an um a um it was it like a till death to us part audition poster uh, oh yeah we don't have an actual uh, poster because we haven't got the cast yet. Yeah, and, uh, it's obviously in the works, mm. but we are we are actually currently designing the till death to us part, like you know the way it's written out. Um, yeah. and we got some really good ideas down. We we have thought about posters literally just last night. I was talking to them about it. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Dan really he helps me really make this really nice audition Lifa. I'm oh, sure yeah. you can show it to the screen yeah, yeah. and send it over. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go, guys. Um <laughs> so yeah, um 
also, if you are interested, just for anyone watching, I am actually still picking up male auditions only at the moment. Because there you go. You there you go. If anyone's interested, first people. Male yeah. auditions open still. Male auditions open. So, yeah, so that's the little poster we've, we've got at the moment. But, mm -hmm. you know, there'll be more in the future. Mm -hmm. Huh. Um, now, when I saw the poster, I noticed a group name, Atticus. Is this something that you created? Yes. Uh, so Atticus Entertainment, it, it's not like a proper business. It's, uh, yeah. it's just it's, it's, it's a group of my, my friend Tom York and Dan Rimmel. It's us three. We just wanted to create a little group that would uh, that just is, is really inspired in the art of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are. We we're not we're not we're not asking for money. We're not we're not <laughs> going out there uh, doing pro, pro promotional videos for people. Mm -hmm. We're literally just making smart films for us, which will go to an audience, and that's what we care about. I, you know, I really like that in a in a filmmaker. I don't like a filmmaker that's like, oh, I got this story, but I wonder how much money it's going to make. I I like a filmmaker that mm -hmm. can create a story. That they want to tell and they just want to share the story because they want to tell the story yeah. and not because they're like oh um okay i've got this how much money um, can i make yeah so it's it's not for us it's for the audience yeah. so we we as like a group we want you to enjoy it we did we it's yeah. not for us it's just you know we, we, just, we just have fun making it yeah but, yes oh. um so yeah <laughs> now obviously as you said at the beginning um you are an actor as well yes. now um who would you say is your inspiration as an actor inspirations oh <laughs> To be fair, I, going down the line, I've had so many in, like people I've inspired to me because yeah. I've always changed my mind. Yeah. Uh, I've always been a huge fan of two actors, which are Hugh Jackman and oh, of Jeremy Jordan, who is a he, he's mainly into musical theatre. He's Broadway, oh, yeah. he's in Newsies, but mm. the way he performs is just mm. insane. And it's his acting, not really much his. Sing he can sing and dance, but it's his yeah. acting. And uh, I like the idea of of range. And I'm a big fan of actors that aren't stuck to their genre. They can broad out. Yeah, that's what I want to be like. I yeah. want to be doing a bit of everything. You know, you're always keeping it fresh. Yeah. See, I mean that. In, in films, I notice that, that that can actually be hard for some actors because obviously, um, when if you have an actor that goes on to something like EastEnders, they um, if they go on to something like that, they run into the trouble of being typecast, which mm. um, which is then which I I then feel sorry for the actors because then it's just sort of them going, I've landed a role, yes, yeah. I know I'm getting the same kind of I role. Think... It sort of depends on the. Um, it sort of depends on the actor's like view. Obviously, some actors are very happy just uh, sticking to the, you know, just doing that one type. Like I'm sure Adam Sandler is very happy just doing his comedies. But uh, connection. Yeah, I, I think for people that obviously have been typecast, I think the best thing they can do is take a risk. That's what I would do. Yeah, know, try and get out there. Yeah, I mean sometimes though that can be hard though. Yeah, I, I think it's just the comfort zone. Obviously, I'm not a big mm. fan of the comfort zone. I really want to stretch that out. What is it? Yeah, uh, saying that life's like an elastic band, and hmm. the more you pull it, you know the shape will change and it will still be bigger than it was before. And that's what you do. You just need to carry on pulling it, and then eventually yeah. you have a bigger circle of stuff you're comfortable with on film and stuff you yeah. can. Do. That's an interesting analogy. I, I actually quite like that. I yeah, want to put so that into my life. Better <laughs> stretch your band. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, as an actor, we have to take a character that's been written 
and then we have to expand and create the character. How do you go about that? How do you go about creating characters? So, uh, so for creating a character, I like to. I've got like a different method to being a character. So mm. when it comes to being a character, the first thing uh, I like to do is get all the information together of the character. Uh, you know, and then with that information, you add in the information that you would like to add in. So, for example, you know everything about the character, but was it you don't know uh, about where he went to school? You just add that in to mm. add to the realism. And you know, if you know your like, if you know your character. As, yeah. as a person then that will make it very easy to become the character and i would say to be fair it's the same thing yeah. with creating yeah actually i would say yeah it's the same thing as creating when you're creating you need to know your character connection is dying okay <laughs> yeah so uh, know your characters oh, oh. Hello? Hi, I'm here. Um, connection has... Oh, hello. It's okay for me. Can you hear me, Sean? Yeah. Dude, it's over for you, it's not for me. I'm good. Um, my connection's very slow. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, now... I can see next to you a big shell set of shelves. Yes. There's a lot of films. There's a lot of films, a lot of games. And games. Games can't you can't actually leave out actors from games, can we? I mean, well, actually, that, that's, to be fair, that... you can. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, some actors, you know, you've got voice acting, and let's be honest, acting yeah. obviously is a very important job, even it, just yeah. for storytelling. And in video games it's the same thing, you know, mm. you've got the actor he, in the game and the actor in the yeah. game does an amazing job at telling yeah. the story. And it's exactly. the same thing, especially, uh, you're going to take this game, was it Detroit Become Human, PS4? You ever played that? That's an amazing game. So uh, the yeah. fact is, is that the, that's, that's acting. That is acting. Yeah. The actor is strapped and it's their actual acting skills which are used for the game. So despite yeah. that, acting is important. Yeah, exactly. I mean, one thing though that um, I I would like to try at any point in my career, um, it, when it when it comes to acting anyway, is try green screen or mocap kind of acting, whether yeah. it's in a game or in a film. It does sound that a it sounds interesting, but then b it's Usually, what is hard? What I find that may that is could be is yeah, Blair. Um, that is, I think, harder is that the actor has no clue what the set's going to look like, what what the location is going to look like. They have all they have is some markings. Yeah. You and then they it's have to market, kind of... but I suppose it's in that situation it's the director's job to sort of tell the actor what the sets yeah. look like because yeah you know, must have art and stuff in mind beforehand yeah so, I, I mean, see your room is that but then 1917 poster yes I love that film that film was oh, amazing. Yeah. I actually watched yeah. it with two guys from Atticus before we were going on stage in the pavilion in Bournemouth. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we watched it before uh, we did Peter Pan. and uh, That was a good one. The film was awesome. Film yeah. Was awesome. I mean, I, I got it on... Uh, I got the DVD I got the DVD on Blu-ray. And I've just... Um, I spent a day just sitting down watching the film. And then um, I watched the film once. Then I watched... Watched it once again with Sam Mendes' commentary and then um, Roger Deakins' commentary. And hearing um, hearing all the cuts, um, when, um, when Roger Deakins mentions all the cuts and all the 
wipes and everything. Some of them you just don't so see. Subtle. They're so subtle. Yeah, because the A side and the B side are matched so perfectly. Yeah. That it's just, it, I'm, it's, um, it's impeccable. It's amazing. It's a masterpiece that I... It's pretty good. Um, I want to, I mean, I, I'm just sitting down. Um, but, uh, I'm going to sit down once a week and rewatch that film with with my notebook and just take notes and learn i mean I, that film actually has inspired me to create this film that i'm writing at the moment um in the sense that you have um position a where the story starts and you have position b where the story ends and you have a goal to get, you have to get from a to b and you have to do and and there's you have a goal to getting to b but then I also want to take the idea of doing it as a one shot to create the yeah. film um, for the film and try and learn the technical aspect whilst listening to what they have to learn. I feel myself that there is only so much you can learn from from listening and yeah. you can learn so much more by actually doing. Yeah, no, that film, um, watching it made me very, when, so after watching that, Dom uh, offered me the part for Wandering Soldier afterwards. Oh, yeah. And having, you know, after watching that, the excitement to do a war <laughs> film was insane. Yeah. Because obviously, um, I think you guys know that the uh, film was based upon 1917. Yeah. yeah. And it was it, mind-blowing. Uh, yeah. I'm excited to work in the. Uh, we got uh, projects lined up in the future as well, which will be really fun. Yeah. So uh, if, uh, I'm going to be working. Uh, this I do a lot of on camera stuff. This is the first oh. time. I'm, uh, but so Dom's obviously pitched you guys Teddy Bear. Yeah. He and I'll be, Teddy Bear. Yeah, I will be working um, behind the camera for that as well. Hmm. Interesting. Really What's uh, so, yeah. what role would you be? trying out this time then behind camera so this time uh ideally it'll be some camera stuff uh i'm mm. sort of i'll be a bit flexible so uh i'll be probably doing some camera stuff but obviously i'm always up for doing a bit of lighting if i have to yeah you know, just but obviously you know it's good to build a really good partnership uh yeah industry and the partnership that i've got with real wood is awesome and I really mm. suggest that if anyone out there is really keen filmmaking, build partnerships, build contacts. Yeah. The industry is built on contacts. And I'm yes. sure that's how people have got to the position they're in because of people they know. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, the interesting, the interesting, the interesting, um, the industry Sorry, the industry is a very interesting place, mm. actually. I mean, I don't have much experience in the industry except for doing extra work on films. But, um, but hearing stories of um, how different, different actors and different celebrities have gotten to where they are is just, it's interesting. Because one, um, and the same pattern always emerges. It's never, actors, um, it's very rarely that an actor just gets a role and then boom, successful. Yeah, it's it, always it's a difficult overnight industry. success has that long story behind it. And sorry, you were saying? <laughs> no, I was just saying it is it is a difficult industry and it's it's one in yeah. it's a one in it's like winning the lottery, isn't it? Where the chances yeah. of anyone scoring such a major low a role and that's why about obviously the elastic band it's really mm. good that everyone actually i think it's good to have better more things under your belt so not just yeah. being an actor but being a director being a cameraman doing all of this will build you and push you forward and that's the best thing yeah. i could offer produce stuff especially now learn yeah. new skills this is the only way i feel like people could you know be successful it's because yeah you know, who are you going to hire? You're going to hire an actor who could just act or an actor who has a keen eye for directing as well. How do you want to tell the story of Till Death Does Apart? Uh, so for Till Death Does Apart, I am very keen of like, 
making it very dialogue driven and very story focused. Yeah. Because I've noticed with a lot of people oh, yeah. making short films now, they do they they put in very fabulous camera angles, very good editing, and that's mm. like the foundation of their film. But yeah. obviously they do have a good story, but I really want to focus on that story and I'm yeah. gonna be honest with you. It is the hard route because there has been a lot of <laughs> stressful nights. Where I'd be ripping out my hair because I want to write a good story for you guys. Um, yeah, I like what it's come out as. Uh, I think it, it's looking really good so far, and obviously it's still in the works. I'm still get uh, you know currently in the auditioning phase. I'm you know casting the parts, uh, yeah. but with, yeah, we're sort of just gonna see where it sort of goes from there, but. I think yeah, it's looking it's honestly looking really good, and I I would say for this it's very dialogue driven. So obviously casting is very important. I need to make sure whoever's playing my parts they play it right. They look yeah, good. They feel yeah, it. obviously. I mean, I recently I've I've seen um I've seen a few different um just dialogue driven stories. And one thing that I noticed, actually, that I that um, that just works, is um, when you have just simple, the most simple shots are you um, are sometimes the most effective, especially with a dialogue story. Yeah. Sorry, I mean, um, and the other film can't remember the name to it was it's a keanu reeves and winona Ryder um kind of um dark romance kind of story using Ooh. dark comedy and it's just pure dialogue um uh, uh, hang on uh, it was um either way you know i agree just dialogue yeah, no, but either, very important. yeah. And, you know, I'm going to have some fancy shots and stuff, but, I, you know, yeah. the fact is, though, is I think making it basic and simple with the arts of just just the filming, you can get something mm. that looks very good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. No problem, <laughs> Um, thank you very much, Sean, for coming on. Yes, thank you for having me. The pleasure is all mine. And we shall see you all in the next one. Goodbye.